Thousands of years ago, when the light of human intelligence first began to dawn, long before the development of speech and other primitive accomplishments, necessity had become the mother of invention and man could shoot with a bow and arrow. This sharpshooting genius, Mr. Howard Hill, is a proficient exponent of that ancient art and is considered America's foremost hunter with these worthy weapons. The unknowing observer is likely to underestimate the merit of the bow and arrow and the consummate skill required in their creation and efficient use. Time and experience have proved the wisdom of ancestral archers in selecting for their bows the sturdy and pliant wood of the yew tree. It lends itself more than all others to the exacting requirements of a perfect bow. The discrimination with which an expert craftsman chooses a billet of yew wood amounts almost to an obsession and invariably and appropriately leads to a vice, a wooden vice, in the clutches of which the embryonic bow goes under the refining influence of a draw knife. Little more than the bark is removed from the back of the billet, a thin layer of sapwood is left on. For while the heart of the wood gives strength to a bow, the sapwood makes it flexible and is actually the bow's backbone, particularly when reinforced with a finishing strip of rawhide. A perfect bow stave should be made of two pieces of wood exactly alike in weight, but adversely shaped at one end. With a band saw, triangular notches are cut in the end of each. The pieces are removed and the pair of billets are fitted and glued together to make a fishtail splice. The union providing equal strength and pliability in each half. There is no better half, although this joint is the missing link in Cupid's bow. Then the modern Robin Hood puts the finishing touches to a tough scrape. The skillful sculptor of the longbow trims the weapon to a figure of fine balance in weight and line. He dresses and sands it to the style and symmetry worthy of a bowman's bow brummel. Forced to the wall for a final test, he springs it on a tillering device in which he pulls and stretches the bow, not to make bow ends meet, but to determine the equalization of flexibility and strain over its entire length, precisely as when pulled by the archer in action. The evolution of the arrows. From square wood stock, a special jig makes the shavings dance. And if the slender shafts are approved by the eagle eye of the modern woodman, then they are worth turning down in the sanding machine. Some of them are tipped before being placed in the furrows of a grooved board. The arrows revolve with the turning of a hand wheel as they are held beneath a sanded belt. Each arrow is finished evenly to within one gram of its proper weight. The arrows are polished and dipped in lacquer. The feathers are glued on, pinned until they dry, and then are cut to shape with a special tool. There are three distinct types of arrows, each used for a specific purpose. First, the English ferrule for target shooting. Second, the steel broadhead for hunting big game. And third, the blunt point with a cartridge shell over the end for smaller game. Archery has played a vital part back through the ages of man's glorious conquest, but time forgot to remember when it was ever difficult for a woman to string a bow. So the prowess of these frail femmes is shown in their splendid display of equal rights. Right from the chin, the point of aim method used in target shooting by which an arrow is aimed at an imaginary, the more direct style of the hunter, and does fairly well. At times, he lies down on the job to get a shot at wary game. And he holds the bow with his feet for long distance test. The foot shot record is 517 yards, and the long distance hand shot, 472. And of course, the advantage of shooting in this position is to make the game believe he's only fooling. They soon get the point, and imagine their surprise. The artful archer dishes up a new recipe, an upside-down shot that really takes the cake. No wonder he parts his face in the middle. Two champions enter into friendly competition, one with a shotgun, the other with the longbow, to try their skill at skeet shooting. The clay pigeons are hurled mechanically from a trap, and Mr. Harry Fleischman holds the international record for breaking them before they strike the ground. But the bow and arrow is more difficult. Never before has an archer been able to excel in the sport. The clay discs are only four inches in diameter, yet Hill succeeds in breaking eight out of 12. In slow motion, the whirling target soars into range. In a graceful curve, the arrow leaves the bow. A hit, and the shattered bird flutters to earth like so much paper as the archer follows through. Deep in the wooded realm of nature is the true bowman's paradise. From the hidden depths of sparkling shrines flow crystal streams of what it takes to keep a fish from drowning. No other sport could so inspire skilled hands in the novel use of quaint weapons. 
Methinks tis a fitting cove in which to ply an ancient calling. So angle round and cool your bet, ye totas of rod and line. For here's a yarn that will bait your minds with memories of Isaac Walton. A whopping tail of fish that really tips the scale. And any dot that will turn that trick must have a string to it. A line that's wet and gathered in is loosely wound in loops around one's little finger. This makes for freedom when carried by the arrow from the bow. And what an arrow. Barbed like a young harpoon. But when it hits, it sticks and brings the bacon home. So up and at him, little man. If he gets it in the neck, call him Gill in honor of all his ancestors. This is a difficult shot because the water deflects the arrow. There he goes. You got him. Right across the forecastle. Tow the bilgy barge ashore. The fish seem to like Mr. Hill. He's got a great line, and they come right to him. Another dark, shadowy form is swimming by in the left. And as Mr. Hill puts his best bow forward, his aim is to strike up an acquaintance with the passing fin. He gets the go by when, bingo, he stops him, then nonchalantly begins to use his drag. Hill appears to take his time, but the slow motion camera is responsible for his pensive attitude. He seems to be waiting for fish that never come in. Although the greeting is not mutual, there's a glad hand and a rousing welcome. Why, it's the kingfish himself, followed by the whole royal family. And this, dear children, is the buckskin bowman, the shooting star who hitched his wagon to an arrow load of fish. The penetrating power of the modern bow is remarkable. To a board an inch and a quarter in thickness, Mr. Hill drives a cartridge shell blunt point arrow that measures more than a half inch across the end with a force equal to 600 pounds of energy. He then repeats the action in slow motion. The average bow requires a pull of from 40 to 50 pounds. The pull of this one is 110. It'd be interesting to know who pays the board bill. A flaming candle wick makes a wicked target. At normal camera speed, the flight of the arrow can barely be seen. But the proof of the put out is plainly visible through the meets an arrow becomes a modern fire extinguisher. Blood fingers and a leather cup prevent painful bruises by the bowstring. Straight as an arrow is a striking phrase, but not quite true. The arrow staggers and weaves as centrifugal force keeps it on its wavering course until just before it hits the target. And as the spiral groove in a rifle barrel spins a bullet, so do the feathers spin an arrow. It leaves the bow at a speed of 250 feet per second. Equipped with a sharp hunting point, it will penetrate 72 inches of flesh, bringing sudden death, but with little shot. Well, we can't have everything. An apt pupil and a worthy brother bow boy, in keeping with the popular custom of taking a crack at China, agrees to lend a hand with the plate. Let's hope he gets it back. But it's a pretty safe bet with Hill on the mound, and he drives a clean shaft right through center. In retarded rhythm, he serves up a slow spinner, and the home plate is completely flabbergasted. Arrow is slizzy on the rebound. Next, like the crack of doom. At a speed of 250 feet a second, arrow might is dynamite, and the shattered symbol of an early romance is ready for a turnover. It's great to be shot at and missed, but shades of William Tell, that was an arrow escape. <laughs>